You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project Podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, have you ever gotten reader's block? And today to answer, we have on Kelly Power, author of Tomb Stories from Engine Books. Uh, Have you ever gotten reader's block? Like where you just can't, cannot get into any book and you get frustrated with the process of reading? I have definitely had that. I have found it's periodic and tied to... I can usually tie it to something. An author? (laughs) No, because I'll just close that book and I'll move right on if it's a particular author. I've I've tried a few times with William Gibson and do not understand. Also Tolkien, but my my antipathy toward Tolkien is well documented. Uh, You have a partner in arms there. I'm not a... Not not a fan of written Tolkien, and I know that that's like a an offense punishable by death. But it's um it's dry. It is dry. Um, I've never even attempted to read Lord of the Rings because I read The Hobbit, and I said that's enough of that. I can't see myself going through three tomes of this after I've done The Hobbit. Now my brother tomb is a it's a great <laughs> term for it because you'll think you're you you will you will see through time and think you're dead while you are reading <laughs> Tolkien. My my brain is dying a slow death over dwarfish songs and yeah, I I can't Oh no, no. There is one point in it where you have watched okay, you know in the movies mm. that point where okay, Merry and Pippin have you have helped the trees defeat uh, Saruman, spoilers, yes. uh, and then Legolas and Gimli come and you meet them and they just go, what have you two been up to and this and that kind of thing. That's all very well and good in the movie. In the book, you read both plot lines. Like, you read Gimli's plot and then you read Legolas's plot and then you read Merry and Pippin's plot and then when they all hook up, instead of, like, cutting back and forth, like, cutting away and being like, oh, they filled each other in, no, you're subjected to four and a half pages where they recap everything you just read. Like, it violates the basic principle of writing, which is don't give the reader the same information twice, and just does it ad nauseum. And I'm like, what are you thinking? Was it last year you did the... Uh, Lit Wars. Yeah, the Lit Wars. Which I won. <laughs> is that subjective or objective? That is... There was audience applause stating that I lost, but <laughs> that audience was biased. It was a sci-fi convention. You knew in your heart that you would actually win. I did. I so, did. have I had the reading uh, doldrums? I've definitely had that. Uh, I've had it um, typically when I've been forced to be reading other things that I don't want to read, so it leaves me no time to read the things I want to read. Like, doing my master's was like that. But when I did finally crack that doing my master's, it's when I read the whole Harry Potter series. So once you pierce the wall, it's good. And I'm actually on a reading jag right now, so it's it's unusual. I feel like I'm coming off a, a reading downtime straight into this period of voracious consumption of books. Interesting. I, I feel like last year, the last two years were big voracious consumption years for me. Like in addition to getting a lot of writing done, uh, I think in 20... 20- 17, I read um, 300 novels. Well, you had yourself sort of out there saying you were trying to get through... A lot. Yeah, a ton of books that that particular year. But So would you have done all those books... If you hadn't set that challenge yourself, I can't for now. I've got too much on the go with the with the company. Like, there's just too much. I've been struggling to get through one that I'm excited to read. I'm like, dang it! I'm like, thank you very much. Next, we have Olivia Robinson, who is the author of uh, The Blue Moth Motel, a new book from Breakwater Books. Olivia Robinson, have you ever gotten reader's block? Have you ever just, what about a book can make you put it down? What about a book 
or is there a specific book that have made you just go, nope, I'm done reading, can't read right now? Oh, um, I am usually pretty good at picking books that I know I will love <laughs> to read. Um, I'm definitely a big mood reader, so I pick up books based on the season and also what mood that I'm in. So like I have to read a book that's set in the summer during the summer. I can't read really? it during the winter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Which does uh, limit my reading uh, somewhat, but I have so far managed very well. Um, like if there's parts of it that are set during the summer, then that's fine. Like if it's kind of a multi decade type, like multi-generational story, then um, I can read it as long as I'm in the right mood to read it. <laughs> okay. Um, so I am, yeah, a bit of a strange reader in that regard. But um, I think something that would make me put down a book is if there's any like ableist language in it or any themes, um, yeah, that are ableist or don't really have time for that type of uh, <laughs> writing and just I don't think it's uh, necessary. Um, yeah, they'll do it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, but I, yeah, I rarely, um, rarely put down a book. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm right. Pretty good at, <laughs> at choosing what I will like, but um, yeah, and I don't really get in a reading slump. Sometimes I read less than other times, but um, I've really been <laughs> enjoying audiobooks uh, probably in the past year or so. So those have really um, increased the number of books that I can read because I can be reading while I'm driving as well, which is like, yeah, the best. Yeah, I, I do that as well. Um, I actually have different audiobooks depending on what task I'm doing. So I have one for mm -hmm. like being on the treadmill, one for driving that will take forever. Like I'll be reading the driving one for a year because it's 20 hours. And I only drive three hours a week. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. 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 I just actually discovered the feature that you can like speed it up. Yes. So I usually listen to it depending on the narrator. I'll listen to it at like 1.2 or 1.3 speed. Uh, I'm a native Newfoundlander, so I've listened to it on like 2.5 speed because oh I'm like, gosh. now it's now it feels like it's natural <laughs> yeah. to me. Like, <laughs> yeah. sounds like man, yeah. perfect. Here we go. Perfect. Off we yeah. Go. yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's very quick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I'll turn it back on, and it's like I'll like if I start it again or something, or if I close the app, it'll go back to one speed, and it feels like they're all talking like this yeah <laughs> i know Fun. thank you very much next on the line we have john dobbin best-selling author of the starving oh my uh do you ever get reader's block yeah that's an interesting question um i find that this is actually before i started forcing myself to read a little bit more um i found that i could read a lot for a few months but then i'd get to the point where i'm like hey, okay you know i'm not really interested in doing much reading right now um and so it would take me a while to get over that yeah. um and so that was kind of a reader's block but i've been finding lately that um where i have been reading a lot more that if i get into a book and it's not what i envisioned i kind of put off reading it Yep. You know, like I don't want to read it anymore. Yep. And I have to really force myself unwillingly to read it to get through it. I just give up on those books. Unless it's something I need to read for class or yeah. for research for something, it's just gone. Like, like there's a famous author that I've never been able to read one of his books. I've tried multiple times, but um, mm -hmm. William Gibson. Yeah. He's famous. He's, he's one of the top, like, when people, you know, think of the hardcore sci fi people, it's like he's Neuromancer. always there. Yeah. He's one of the top Normans, or exactly yeah. that. Cannot do it. Now I tried to read that. Tried to read its sequels. Tried to read something other by him, and I'm just I don't know what it is about his style. I tried ebook. I tried print. I tried audiobook. I just give up at about three chapters and be like, I could do better things. I managed to get through that, but I, I see what you're saying about it. Um, I don't know what like I can handle different styles. I can handle like uh, Rendezvous with Rama, like, and I can handle Snow Crash, like yeah. it's you know. 
Um, the only book that I've done that with recently was the first of that series of books that Stephen King did with Peter Straub. Okay. Talisman. Um, yeah. I I did not enjoy that whatsoever. Yeah. Couldn't get past the first couple of chapters. I wow. had to put it down. Interesting. Which is weird because Stephen King's one of my favorite writers. Yeah. Which can only lead you to lead you to believe that it's either the Straub side of it that you're not liking, yeah. or that they're losing something in collaboration. Yeah, for might sure. be interesting to read something by Straub only and see if you have trouble with it, and then you're like, oh, well, that's what the problem yeah. was for me. Yeah, blame it all on him. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, like everyone has different tastes, so I mean, yeah. just because you don't like it. Thank you very much. Next, we have on Heather Riley author of The Binding of the Almatraic series, coming soon from Engine Books. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, okay. Uh, Heather Riley, have you ever gotten reader's block where you just can't read? Like, it feels like you can't read anything. It feels like uh, books just blocked you, and you're like, I can't read this book! Um, okay, so once. Um, so, as you know, I'm a professional editor as well, and uh, I have been for a very long time, and I read an indie novel who who had, uh, who had was by an author that had self-published. Uh, I know what you're talking about, <laughs> but we won't name it. Right, yeah. we're not going to name it, yeah. but, um, but trying to read that book was an experience akin to torture yeah. for me, um, and uh, yeah, it was just, it was heart-wrenchingly soul-breaking trying yeah. to read through it because of all the incorrect grammar punctuation like sentences did not flow it was almost unreadable yeah since then i have learned that the author has had it edited and you cannot find the old copy anymore oh you've got the rare gem i do i yeah. do but uh it, it is probably much better now but yeah. but which is a good reason not to name it, because, right. I mean, if it's, you know... It's improved, yeah. right? And that shows growth as a writer, which is great. Yeah. Um, but it also was a learning thing for me, because it was before I had published, and, um, well, yeah, I think it was, actually. It was before I had published, so it taught me a lot of things not to do in my books. Oh, yeah. Um, There's nothing like reading something worse than yours. To make you go, oh, I don't ever want to do this. Yeah, yeah, right. So it, it was good, though, because it made me grow as an author, even though, yeah, learn from other people's mistakes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, that's an interesting thing, because sometimes I'll do that when I'm interviewing an, an author that we're going to publish or that we're considering publishing. I'll, I'll ask what their, like, top five favorite novels are, but also their top five least favorite. Yeah. And if their top five least favorite... Are any all, of yours? Don't publish them? No. no. <laughs> that, that would be great. If they, could, if they could point out flaws in my own stuff, absolutely. <laughs> but, like, if their top fives are all USA Today bestsellers or New York Times bestsellers, I'm like, oh, no, you haven't dug deep enough to know how bad it can get. Yet. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the worst New York Times bestseller is still a competent novel. Yeah. I think, too, it really depends on why you dislike the novel. Because yeah. some people, you just don't like the story, and it's just not your thing. Yeah. Um, but it, but then there are other ones that have, like, structural issues or character issues or different things like that. So I think it depends, too, on how in-depth you're looking at it and for That's what reason. true, and that could kind of tell you a lot about how analytical they are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because it can tell you like that, that they're looking at it from this other perspective. Like uh, I like applying all the different theories to stories I really like. I really like Back to the Future. Oh yeah, um, I love that. Yeah, so you can approach it from a lot of different theories, but the second and you can approach it from a uh, feminist theory, but you shouldn't because you realize how horrifying that story is from Lorraine's point of view. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that is a horror movie from Lorraine's point of view. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I like this too much. I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose not to, nope. Filter it that way. Nope. Yeah. Yep, over here. Yeah. <laughs> in the bin. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Amanda Labonte, author of the Call of the Sea and Supernatural Causes series. Have you ever had reader's block? Oh... Like when you can't find some, like you can't settle in to read something? Yeah. Yeah. And I hate that because yeah. it usually is just a sign of not being able to like relax and calm your mind. Yeah. Like for me. So 
like when I can't settle in to read something, it just means that like like I can't I probably can't settle into much. Like I'm just my my brain is too go go go. So yeah. yeah, that sucks. It does. I don't like it. No, I'm not a fan. No. Is it ever a different right? Do you, do you ever find there's a certain author that does it, or is it just the external world coming in? It's the external world coming in. Like and usually it's like you know maybe I'm behind on work or I haven't you know been catching up on like my own writing or it could be anything but yeah it's occasionally not very often but occasionally it'll happen because I read something amazing and I can't get into anything else that's fair like it's just it's almost like it's you know it's cleansed my mind too much and I can't like I can't pick up another book Jessica I was in a class with Jessica Grant once and she said that in some way she blames every book yeah. for not being the previous book. Yeah. Like, she's so used to that point of view, and then that book ends, and when she starts the next one, there's, like, this yeah. adjustment period. Like, I remember I was in high school, and it was summer, and I read To Kill a Mockingbird for the first time. And when I finished that book, like, I couldn't read another book. Hmm. And Certainly not to catch out- a watch, to go set a watchman. No. <laughs> no, and I, could, I, I ended up just reading it again. Yeah. Like, it, like that was how I almost had to like, like let my mind like come down from reading it before I could go on to something else because it was like nothing else was going to be that book for me and it was almost like it was an like you get that amazing experience where it's like you you've had this wonderful experience with this book but at the same time like you know nothing else is ever going to be that experience and yeah. you're never going to get that experience of reading that book for the first time back yeah and it's yeah. Yeah, I've had reader's block. That was a great, um, no problem. We've talked about To Kill a Mockingbird before. It's actually yeah. one of the best books out there. I learned recently that one of the reasons it got well known so fast is it's one of the first, it was one of the first experiments in paperback. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It turns I did it, not know that. Yeah, after it won the Pulitzer Prize. Because right. for a period it was thought that like, paperbacks that were really easily accessible were like the sleazy like the crime stories and the right. this and the that like the harlequins and yeah that kind of and thing. anything yeah. with literary merit was in hardback and never anything else and to right. kill a bocking bird i was watching this documentary on it was one of the first if not the first that they were like no 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 let's make this wild widely accessible to everyone everyone needs to read this book and they made them cheaply wildly widely available and just wow and they became a staple of like high schools. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was cool. Next on the line, we have Josh Connors. Uh, Connor or Connors? Connors. Oh, I thought so, nice. yeah. Josh Connors. Uh, there's two of them, apparently. No. Um, <laughs> uh, he is the author of Small Town Queer, both the uh, play and the adaptation novel or play or whatever you want to call it josh connors uh, i know the answer to this from our from our interview from the earlier part of our interview but have you ever gotten reader's block where you just could not read a book or any book and you were just like nope can't do it i definitely um and it's it's not always because i don't like the book or can't get into it i find certain times of the year i read more like um Christmas break, those like few couple of weeks, where I guess it's similar to what we're feeling right now, where you're not really expected to be anywhere or do anything. The world kind of shuts down for those holidays, so there's more of a chance to sit back and read and feel like you're not uh, you're not procrastinating doing something else. And I find during the summer months, I I read a lot more um, books. Because, you know, I can sit in the living room with the sun shining in and drink my coffee and it just feels a little more um, enjoyable. I find sometimes during the, the, the gray winter months trying to read, um, I just get a, a little down and ca- I can't focus on, on the stories and stuff. So, Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I that happens to me a lot too. And, yeah. and sometimes I'll try to come back to those books, and sometimes I'll realize, no, it was the book. This is a bad book. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Diana Brown, author of Saltwater Joys. Um, have you ever had reader's block? Have you ever had trouble getting through enough, or just a time when you couldn't read, period? Yes. Yeah. So, during, uh, even, uh, I find 
reading is very good. So when you're going through something difficult in your life, sometimes reading will take you away yeah. and will bring you somewhere else. But sometimes you just can't go there. Like you read the paragraph and you have to reread the paragraph and then you have to reread the paragraph. Because Reality steps in. Yeah. So you have other things on your mind and you just kind of, um, you know, push that away. But I find when I'm in a better state of mind, you know, in yeah. relaxed and, and then I can read. But if you're stressed, it's kind of hard. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Stress is killer. Stress yeah. is hate it. Yeah. Obviously. I don't think anyone likes stress. No. It, sometimes, I did do a course, though, and stress can be actually a good motivator. I would love to know about that. Yeah. Because that's... So if you can, if you can look at stress as, um, as something that's positive... Yeah. And it'll catapult you into what uh, you need to do. It has been said that most people's natural state is relaxed. Of me, that most people's natural state of mind is relaxed. Yep. Like they go back to that. M my natural state is in stress. Is I in start stress. to get anxious when I'm told to relax. Yeah. Yeah. Like when it's like, no, you have to sit there and do nothing. I start <laughs> to shake. I'm just like, yeah. but there's there's things that need to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you've run a small business. <laughs> Yeah. Stuff needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Just constantly turning. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have copy director for Rogue Penguin Creative, Alicia Morrissey, award winning professional writer. Alicia Morrissey, have you ever gotten reader's block where a book you just could not get through it or get through any book? Yeah. I get, I get reader's block all the time. I, I put down probably more books than I actually finish. And I've read, it's got to be in the thousands of books. But yeah, I, there, are certain, there are certain experiences written about in books that are either so foreign to me or so unpalatable to me that I just put them down. Um, there are also stories that just tend to meander a lot, and I give up on those. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I need some good pacing in what I'm reading. I've talked about um, crime novels a couple of times, and that's that's one of the really difficult but incredible things that crime novelists are capable of doing is is pacing out a story so you want to keep going. Yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ellen Curtis, who is the author of the Infinity series from Engine Books, as well as the editor of the From the Rock Anthology. Uh, have you ever had reader's block? Like, when you couldn't get into any books or you couldn't get into reading in general or anything like that? I do sometimes get that when I'm going through the submissions folder. Especially if it's, if it's a time where we have, like, a lot of very strange submissions. Because, I mean, the quality is hit and miss in terms of the submissions we get we get some really really excellent ones but we also get our fair share of like where where did this come from like i have no idea where this came from kind of thing which people should should still submit i am an advocate for editing before you send things to oh a, yeah a submissions address you know yeah um so i have i have questions sometimes if it's me or if it's what I'm reading. And that's kind of when I take a step back and I'm like, uh, let's get a second set of eyes on this. Let's, you know, walk around the house a bit. Let's read something that I know I like. So I know if it's not just me in a bad mood. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Aaron Vance, editor-in-chief of Engine Books and the editor of the From the Rock anthology series. Uh, have you ever gotten reader's block where you can't just read anymore, either a specific author or just you're burned out on reading in general? Not typically, but I find, this is going to sound so geeky, I find now because I've been editing so much, I almost have to read, like, like I've been, I've been reading fix, like yep. fan fiction of things because I can't actually get into a novel anymore because as soon as I sit down with an actual book, I have to start nit nitpicking it. Yeah. But for me, like... A fic is just something that someone's... And it's fun, and it's silly, and it's simple, and it's like, okay, that was a good cleanser? Yeah. Um, 
So read, I, there's been some books I've had to be like, nope, I can't read that no more. And I, there's some authors that I've tried like four or five times to read. I can't get into them. William Gibson, for me, I can't read him. I can't read Jane Austen, which people think is ridiculous. But no, no. I can't read her. I can't read Terry Pratchett. And I can't read much of Neil Gaiman. And everyone are like, these are like, Aaron will love these books. And I probably would if anyone but them wrote it. Um, which sounds so bad. I'm really I had sorry, a, guys. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I actually felt the same way about Terry Pratchett. Uh, if I, if you ever want to try it again, don't start with the first three. Okay. Like, uh, and, and Terry Pratchett, where he created a world, there's actually, it's, it's disingenuous to call it the Discworld series. It should be a lot of series that are set on the Discworld, like the engine universe. Mm. So, like, uh, I think you would, find the series about death the main like where where the grim reaper is the main character i think you would find that whimsical and fun so maybe start with that which is the first one is book four and then you can just you can look up online the different timelines so it's like oh it's book four and then book six and then book 11 and just read those ones first and if you don't like the rest of it then you don't have to read the rest of it that's fair yeah i might try that yeah yeah you can you can you can kind of look up what ones deal with what kind of thing and be like mm -hmm. oh this is it like the ones that deal with the witches i don't think you would enjoy probably not yeah but uh the ones that deal with death uh are very interesting the, the second one of those is hogfather which is one of my favorite books but um the first the first two discworld books uh both deal with Rincewind, the, the wizard and i cannot get into it apparently it's deep political satire oh. but if you don't know what it's satirizing which is uh, early 1960s, like, <laughs> British politics, then you're just lost. Well, I guess that's why I can't get into it. That is why we can't get into it. We weren't born then. No, we were not. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Paul Carberry, author of the Zombies on the Rock series from Engine Books. Uh, have you ever gotten reader's block? Have you ever just been reading a book or you getting, that you can't finish or gotten to a point where you can't read period just because your brain's not in it uh yes uh i forget the name of the book i think it's the children of huron oh it, the jrl tolkien I just, spinoff I, I was reading it and i just i could not finish that book i just it just didn't work for me yeah i I would say that was the one book, and like I tried several times because I did like the Lord of the Rings growing up. I, I know, did not. I, I know you did not. Yeah, but I was trying to read it, and I was just like, no, it's it's not doing it. That was uh, if I'm wrong. If I'm in case I'm if I'm wrong, let me know. But uh, that was a book. There have been I think two or three now that were based on the Simarmillion, where Christopher Tolkien has taken the sketched out stories that his father wrote in the Simarmillion and has tried to flesh them out and make full short novels of them. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a bit of a, an ex not exaggeration, but elaboration upon something that was already talked about. Which is fine. I'm glad he's, he's doing that because there are people who are hungry for more in that universe. Exactly. So I'm glad that it's there. It's like... I almost wish we could get... Christopher is the, the, the caretaker of the estate, obviously. And if he wants to do some of the books, absolutely. But I honestly think it would be worth their time to seek out, like, okay, here's this story from the Simmermillion that's kind of scary. Let's see if we can get Stephen King or someone like that to right. write it. And Chris edits it and gets it, makes it so that it still fits in canon. Right, like if they got uh, George R. R. Martin. Well, he's write. already behind. He yeah. doesn't need another project, but right. yes. But, like, if he was to write something Lord of the Rings... Yeah. Like, it would fit if it was, like, more of a gritty story, like a bit of a betrayal story or something. Like, he could probably write that better than Chris could. Yeah. No no offense to Chris, no. but, like... Everyone has their... I could not a... write romance. No. It's just not in me. No. Uh, they have... I can't write a normal Newfoundland story to save my <laughs> life. But um, there, there is a point where it's, like, maybe we should take the opportunity, because I'm sure there are hundreds of authors who would love to contribute to the Lord of the Rings universe. Right. You've got an opportunity to get the best of the best and expand it a bit, but he could edit it and make sure it stays true to his father's vision. Maybe that's the uh, the whole question of ego coming into play. Maybe his ego 
will not let him have anyone else involved. Yeah, maybe. It could be. Could. But, uh, maybe. It's also protective. I mean, like, he yeah. loved his father. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, so it's... It could be anything. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in, and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.